Morning. Morning. Oh, are you both on? We can't see you. Good morning. Right, okay. Brilliant. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Outer Area Committee. Uh, my name is Amanda Carter and I chair the committee. It's live streamed on the council's YouTube today. And um, we represent the communities of Farnley and Workley, Pudsey and Carberley and Farsley. So can I ask everybody to introduce themselves, starting with Councillor Carlyle? Yeah, Councillor Peter Carlyle, Carberley and Farsley Ward. Councillor Trish Smith, Pudsey Ward. Andrew Carter, Carberley and Farsley Ward. Jim Pennington, Engagement Support Officer, Peter Nat Council. Natalie Smith, Localities Officer. Councillor Amanda Carter, I'm the chair and represent Carly and Farsley. Uh, Councillor David Blackburn, I'm vice chair and I'm about on the Whirly Hi everyone, I'm Natasha and I'm the Community. Morning everyone, Carly and Swift Community Steam. Morning, uh, it's Jamie, head of Locali Partnerships. Ah, oh, good, we can see you now. Would you like to introduce yourselves, Councillor Siri? Councillor Dawn Siri, what's your name? And Councillor Simon Siri from Putsey Ward. Thank you. Um, we didn't arrange the meeting because we knew you were away, Simon. Actually, we did it because it was the time that most people could actually get here to the meeting, because most of them got council meetings this week. Can I hand over to the clerk to appeals, please? Thanks, Chair. There's no appeals. Agenda item two, there's no exempt items. Agenda item three, no formal list items. Item four, can members declare any interests? Five. Yeah, sorry, I just want to um, declare, obviously, I'm Chairman of Putty Carnival and Putty Christmas Lights. So I've got two applications in today. Okay. And agenda item five, apologies from Council for Sarah. And back over to you, Jeff. The Council is always. So have we got anybody for the open forum? Think no, no, okay. no, so we'll move on to the next one. So the Committee Ring Fence Project. We decided at last meeting that we would talk about some of the uh, ring fencing for the next financial year so that we can try and get ourselves sorted out. Um, we are going to have a cut in our budget of probably around 10%. It's not that this committee is going to be cutting any individual awards back, it's going to be a general cut across all the community committees, which we're expecting. So we wanted to discuss uh, what we actually wanted to ring fence, and we know that we're going to have to make some reductions in, in what we did last year. So, but the council, it was the council, Madam Chair, wasn't it, that the uh, that reduced our budget, not this committee? Yes, oh, sorry, I didn't make that clear, it's council reduction on uh, what we will be able to spend next year. Um, Natalie, would you like to take us through that, please? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so the, the report uh, today, it's got 17 new projects um, to consider. Um, just to confirm that the outstanding balance required to fund all projects approved at today's meeting, subject to confirmation of funding to be met by the Out West Community Committee Allowance for 22-24. Uh, which will be confirmed on or before the 31st of March. Um, okay, okay. So I'll do the wellbeing first, if that's okay. And um, that's at, that's on page seven. Um, I'm going to see it on eight and nine. So I'm just going to go sort of through. I'm not going to read all the details because I know everyone's quite familiar with these. Um, so I'll just go through what the project is and the cost and what it was last year, just for information purposes. So the first one then is Carlin Goyle, booking it down the 1st of April. Um, that's going to be by parks and countryside, um, and they're looking for six thousand seven hundred seventy-seven pounds and ninety-seven pence, um, slightly upon last year, which was five thousand seven hundred fifty-seven pounds and ninety-nine pence. Can I just say um, that unfortunately, this is a parks and countryside have put the bid in that they had for last year when they it was inflated because of the platinum jubilee. It isn't that amount of money, um, so it, we shouldn't be considering six, seven, seven, seven. We should be considering something like five. Okay. <clears throat> Can you both hear Councillor Siri? 
Yes. Yeah, good. Thank you. Right, is everybody happy with that? Hmm. Peter? Yeah, uh, it's obviously for more baskets, isn't it? And that's what we had yeah. for the previous year. So if we're able to confirm the exact cost it would be for what we had, yeah. I guess it'd be similar to then what we had in the year 2021 20, or 2021. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yeah. Um, and that makes a lot more sense because it is a sizable part of the budget. That wish what, what was it that you is it 5,500? Five, five, I'm guessing that's what it was. It was about a thousand pounds more for this for black, platinum jubilee, yeah. Um, so the Farsley and Bloom one, um, again, for the first of April by Farsley Countryside, looking at £3,141.08, which again is slightly more from last year's cost, which was £3,049.60. Again, it should be the same as... Yo. Oh, yeah. It should be the same, 3049. You didn't get an early bit idea on that Jubilee, did you? I have no idea what they do, um, but they didn't seem to be. Um, we paid separately completely for the refurbishment of the cenotaph. Uh, so I, I would say 3049, like it was before. Yeah, I think we put some money in, didn't we? we, oh, we put yeah, we put some money in, yeah. Money yeah. In, yeah. Yeah, I checked the the Carverley one. They'd had they'd added additions to as as you mentioned, but the Farsley one is exactly the same as the previous, but the price that they've submitted has increased. I, I was thinking similar that can we go back to them and say obviously the amount of money we have has decreased, even though I'm sure they would like their cost to go up and we've had them to rethink maybe that that total. <coughs> uh, otherwise we may have to rethink about reducing. Well, they, well they, should come, they can come for mice money, can't they? Yeah. I uh, mean, they, they always ask us for match money anyway. Yeah. So, to, to some extent, big people are double dipping. Yeah? Um, so, I think 3,049 is what we're going through in 2021. Yeah. Okay. So, then we've got the new crown in blue. This is actually the same as it was last year, so it's still a thousand pounds. Looking to start on the first of April through parts and countryside. Yeah, Okay, then we've got Pudsey in Bloom. That will be again 1st of April, 5,306 pounds, 34 pence, slightly above for the 22 cost, which was 5,000 pounds. So it's 5,151.79. Is it worth questioning them why they've put that up again? I mean, I don't. Don't think we'll be getting any anything any different. I just think it's worth asking the question. Um, you know, again, our costs are, are being squeezed. So, you know, are we getting are we getting the right cost? Okay. Councillor Simon, Siri. Yeah, just a question question on there as well is they've got down long hair racks, but we stopped doing them a couple of years ago because they were damaging some of the old properties. So. You know, I agree, keep it as a previous year and it should come in line. Previous year then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So the next one then is for additional gardener resource. Um, this is, for, again, parts and countryside, looking at £15,570. Again, up from last year's, which was £14,114. I take it that's because of uh, increases in, uh, in employment costs. Uh, in, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think it's important that we, uh, we support both New Valley Park and, and, uh, and Tysol, because yeah. uh, otherwise they get no or very little uh, support from Park. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Sarah, did you have your hand up? No. It would, no, it was just a question was um, if we're looking at keeping all the rest of the same budget, do we just say, look, let's introduce 36 hours split over the two parks and then we've we've been fair with all groups 
sticking yep. at the same previous funding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Depends what parks contract is. You might need to speak to them from HR point of view. I mean, I mean, I mean I, I, as long as as long as we're getting what we we require from that. I mean, as I say, it, it was that there was no, but the both parts were sort of not getting what other parts got. Mm. And as long as we're where his money's being used there, I mean, the matter of the hours. I mean, I'd agree with yourself there that. That if we can get if we can get get this roughly the same for the same money, I'm 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 okay. But like we must make sure that we we're, we're looking after people in New Valley Village and in Tyson really. Yeah, well, I think I think we just need to have a, maybe have a conversation with Parks and say if it's a full time position, if it's a, if it's an MTE of one, then what is their standard hours and their standard mm -hmm. contracts? Um, because otherwise we it puts it down to a, a part time position. If we're not looking at full hours, I don't know. It's a HR question. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting point in general. That I think we need to say to all the council departments where we're effectively paying them, mm -hmm. we expect value for money, and our, our constituents expect value for money. So you know, this is not. We are not just a mechanism for council departments to. To, to try and get reinstate some of their budgets. These are for specific jobs we want doing for our constituents and departments need reminding of that. Councillor Simon Seary. Yeah, I agree with Councillor Carter there. Um, and, and, you know, we're looking at slight productivity savings as well. It's a temporary contract that they, they only recruit for six months of the year. So before they even apply, you know, advertise a job, we can try and get them down to that budget if we need to. But I'm sure, you know, there is savings to be had. The community do a lot of work in Tysol as well, so it's just reinforcing what they do as well. Okay, so um, what are we going to do about this question uh, to HR? Do you want to to explore that, or are you happy with the hours that we've got? What are we going to do? Um, well, I think we need to we need to keep to a similar budget to last year, don't we? Really, <laughs> providing it the service can be provided yeah. at, at those hours and that yeah. cost. But I, I do think it's a question a question to be asked. What can we you know What can we have for that budget? How many hours can we have? And will those hours allow us the same level of um, service that we've been yeah. Yeah. Um, enjoying? But we need to ring fence it in the meantime. But, but yeah, we need to yeah. yeah. definitely do. So we'll ring friends that and if you could ask that question, please, Natalie, and then get back to us by email. Are we ring this year's renewal last year? I think we have to ring friends what it, what it says here, don't yeah. we? Yeah. 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 And then if we get something back, we get something back. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 The next one then is again packed and countryside, Pudsey Park, weekend littering. Little picking even not literally. Um, and that's <laughs> <laughs> opposite. <laughs> um, so it's one thousand two hundred and eighteen pounds and seventy pence. Um, again, just slightly over from one thousand one hundred and eighty-three pounds last year. Why don't we do it in every park then? We have band concerts in mm -hmm. Westroy Park, Hainsworth Park, Garvey Park. Hardly. Uh, Valley Park. Valley Park. New Valley Park. But to be fair, they're very good. They come and pick it up the next day when we have an event. We've not had any trouble before in, in Carver. The, the bins have been overflowing, but they've come round with the bags the next day. But this is actual litter picking, isn't it? Yeah. Council theory. Yes, um, this is a new one that went in a couple of years ago because there is no actual um, park services from September through to March. And if we have warm, like a warm Easter or event in September out of the season, obviously a lot of people go to the parks and fill the bins. The bins are left from Saturday, Sunday through till Monday. And obviously, if you have a nice weekend, Saturday and Sunday, it, it, the parks are a, a disgrace. Not all the money's reused. It's been returned sometimes when they haven't had to need it. Um, it's just a, a stopgap there in case. But yeah, I agree. Why why don't they visit the other parks? If if has been hit badly, they could easily pick up the other parks as well. 
Yeah. Were you able to maybe have some information on how much that was used last year? I know Simon mentioned obviously that they didn't need it. I wonder whether it's something we can look at how often it was needed last year, um, whether then we think the other parks needed it and we can have a look at yeah, what yeah. then. Yeah, access some further information and yeah. just at the moment leave it in abeyance. Right, happy to defer that till next time. Yep. To get some more information. Yeah. It doesn't start till September anyway, does it say? Yeah. Okay. But it means I'm not 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 technically you see if it's somewhere else. <laughs> okay, the music box next. Yep, so the next one, like I said, music box is an adult band project um starting the 17th of April. Um, this is a new project. So we've you we've gone used this project before, but not this specific. Sorry, organization but not this project it's a brand new project um, asking for 2950 pounds i know that um this one is in pudsey but i think they get quite a few from other areas yeah, don't they i think it's not just pe people that live in pudsey i think it's surrounding areas yeah that have been attending previous sort of sessions that they've done yeah so do we know the breakdown of where they're from not for this it's normally the, the young people that they work with this is kind of the first older adult ones. adult one that they're looking yeah. at so they might not have them figures but they could get figures for you know who's attended previous so so this is a new project mm. but we're putting it in amongst the ring fencing no these are these are the applications not the uh, ring oh fencing. right yeah. yeah i think this has got to be put to one side to see what See what we've got left after we've we've gone through so. what we do. I mean, the other the other point about it, uh, a lot being a uh, sort of awkward. Here, but I think what we've got to do is we've got to look at um, where uh, where things are being delivered, uh, because what happened in the past might not be uh, conceivably able to happen in next in next twelve months. Um, we already know. That the one piece of public transport that starts at the edge of my ward, goes through Pudsey, and then goes through Farsley and Carberley, is, is getting knocked off at the end of the month, number nine and ten. Uh, and I suspect when we get to June, if that central government money is lost, um, uh, I, I think First and Arriva and, and other, other operators will be looking at other, other services on. Although Peter should know better about that than. than Wait up with you. You're on to do with like, aren't you? So, so as I say, I, I, I think we've we've got to be careful that not all of our residents will be able to get to a lot of things. I mean, we've we've all already got some communication difficulties, like from Carvely to the Pudsey, haven't we? You know, yeah. 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 If you haven't got if you haven't got a car, problems one side of Pudsey to the other. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> Right, any more comments? Are we happy to defer this and get some further information about uh, where we think the people are going to come from? I think it is a concern that uh, they won't be able to get there by bus. And I think people are more and more conscious about uh, the cost of travelling by car. So it might be one just to watch this. Okay, the, the last one then for the wellbeing is the Pudsey Carnival Committee um, starting in May and they're asking for £2,600, same as last year. <coughs> Comments? Yeah, I'm okay with that. <coughs> yeah. I'll just make one point. I have looked at the balance sheet and they have substantial funds, although most of it's in a reserve, which I think is very wise to have, personally, for a rainy day. But um, if our budget keeps on being cut, then we're going to have to look very carefully at organisations that have thousands of pounds in their accounts. I'm personally fine this year. Okay. Councillor Siri, yeah. Yeah, um, obviously uh, someone asked for bank details early on um, and then Peter Treasurer sent them through more recently uh, because there were some outstanding invoices. So it was an inflated bank account that you saw um, previously. I don't think, I'm not sure if Natalie shared the details. Um, 
but we had the um, Breeze events still outstanding to be paid. They only just sent the invoice last week. And then we had some um, batteries that needed um, paying for the um, defibrillators. So it, it was an inflated figure because the accounts hadn't been closed for that year. So the accounts that we were sent weren't correct then? The, the accounts were correct, yes, but there were still some outstanding invoices to be paid that hadn't come through from the relevant um, companies. Okay, are we happy with that then? Yeah, yeah. Initially, I'm not happy with the answer. And the accounts are either right or not. Right, next one. It depends right. when you take a snapshot of the accounts, um, Council Carter. Yeah, either before things are paid or after things are paid. Unfortunately, when invoices come through late from council departments like Breeze, yeah, there's limited we can do. But more than happy to meet and discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please, Ashley. Ben, so I just wanted to bring your attention, uh, as I mentioned, is there's two um, applications that can't come to the committee meeting just because of the timescale, but just want to make you aware um, when considering, obviously, the budgets and things like that. We've had one from the police. Um, they want to do the Outer West ASB and Road Safety Operations 2023 mm. Um I've working with MPT, and they've asked for £6,178.40. Um, that will run from the 1st of April to February next year. Um, so just something to consider. And then also the, there's a small grant for the walking football that we've already, uh, we, we, it's just finished and we they wanted to do it again. That's for 500. So mm. just for context. But, yeah. okay. So just, just for clarification, Shailen, you, you were performing yeah. uh, the walking football thing, uh, which is in Budsey, but that's quite well spread across the old, is, the old, yeah. uh, all the three walls. In fact, I think it's more of my constituents go to that and and all that. But uh, having uh, having been caught in the snow uh, and couldn't get back and had to walk half away from Pulsey with with with, with me stick and then fell on the floor and got picked up by something. <laughs> uh, I, I won't advise walking to Pulsey. <laughs> it's, it's only it's only a small grant anyway. Yeah, that's yeah, it. It yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so it'll go out by email. It's just it, it just makes this committee. So obviously, it can't be approved yeah, here, but just to, just be. Can we just read the, the, the police thing is confusing me. I've seen the application. I'm absolutely in favour of it, mm. but it starts on the first of April. We have no more meetings until June. We need to take a decision today. It, yeah. So we need to know what balance we've got left yeah. when we when you're totting. I assume the lady's totting everything yeah. up furiously at the side of me. Um, <laughs> Because they even answer, don't they? Yeah, it'd have to be, we'll, we'll have to send it out to by the EDN. Um, I can get an email around. It was just like, it's exactly for that reason to no, no, I keep into yeah. mind. <clears throat> uh, it's just unfortunate at the time and that it's been received. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, the, 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 um, there's potentially another one which you know about. Yeah, I'm gonna, I've put that in the app counselor. Uh, yeah, I'll bring that in. Okay, right. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Councillor Smith and I and, 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 and the officer have a, have a secret bid. <laughs> can, I, can I also mention that I think there will be an application coming forward for the week at the seaside again at Swift Community Centre, right, okay. which they typically run in August, towards the back end of the summer holidays. Um, they've done it for well, two years now. This would be the third year, um, and they've had a thousand pounds each year so far. So can I ring fence that please? Because that's important for that community. Is that for use or is it for um it's more it's well it, it's more use for everybody goes if that makes sense so that the parents go with the children but it is it, it's really to prepare the children to go back to school so very few people in the in that community can afford a holiday. So we do the week of the seaside, bring the seaside to them. Did they go at the Dorset trip? It's a different trip. No, no, no. The Dorset trip is the guide, isn't it? Isn't that far more work? That's fair. I think last time we took it out of the app. Oh, yeah. The app. Added that to the app. Well, it'll be all combined this time anyway, won't so it? So do we want it under the ring fence? 
I'm going to ring fence for the axle if you don't mind. That's for 1,000. Please, yeah, thank you. Okay. Everybody agree. <laughs> Okay, right then I'll go to the app applications, uh, starting on page nine, uh, on, on to number 12. Um, the first one is something that we funded last year, is get into the community to rock up, to do a mock-up, building futures together, same price as last year, 12,000, and that's for the year. So the project lasts over the whole year. Are we are we certain that we'll be able to use uh, that the monies will be mixed with well-being? Yeah. There'll be two separate. Yeah, this year we're going to have a transitional year for this right, year, right, and right. we're going to engage members about how we merge those. Okay, right, right. So, so we we still we still if we're doing it on the app, we still got restrictions then. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think it's a great thing, this, but um, have we got any um, information on who attended, how they attended, any sort of outcomes or anything yet? I've got some monitoring back. Um, I can get the information out to you about that. Thanks for that, Mia. But it'd, it'd be helpful with this as well if, if we if we had to break down the which we spun the bed as we went on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, when we've normally done this, sometimes we've finished it with. Uh, more expenditures than we've had, I mean, certainly before lockdown, more expenditures than we had money to, to spend. So we've had to go, go back to it, so it would, it would be helpful there. And the other thing is the, the breakdown um, across 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 the world. I mean, some of it covered by all, covered all worlds and some of it doesn't, uh, but it would, would be helpful. Yeah. <coughs> nice. Okay. Can I have them having that? Sorry, just a bit clear. How are we wanting to do events for both our clouds? But this is a bit of an application, this one. Oh, right. Not sorry, it's our next percent. So, yeah, 12,000, is it? Yeah. And what date is that? What date would that be from? Or the operating bill? We've it throughout the year, I think. It's yeah, they're looking at various sessions that people can come to. Yeah. So, so, so when will the first one be? I think they're looking at April to start, to start again. Um, they've literally just finished a couple of weeks ago, the last year's one. Um, so I think that's going to be Yeah. Okay. And so the next one then is uh, Lazy Youth Services doing the Mini Summer Sports Programme 2023. That'll be in August. Um, looking for £720, which is the same as it was last year. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Do we get any monitoring on it again? Because um, you know, I'm told that the, the take up's quite poor, certainly at Swing. Exactly. Yeah. So I'd like some monitoring on, you know, just so, just because we need to get value for money. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not being used, then let's do something that will be used. Oh, let's do it somewhere yeah. else. Where yeah. Is that I can definitely have a look at that for you and get it sent round. Thank you. Yeah, because I can't believe that we've got some strong football teams as well. So, you know, it would be interesting to see how well used it is. Okay. Um, are you wanting to approve it or defer it? Oh, no, I really think so. We'll do something with the money. If it's not that, it'll be something. But it's just a case of making sure that we're doing the right thing in the right area, I think. Certainly a lot of the sessions, I remember looking at it last year and there were some times when the weather was poor where there were a couple of people like someone came to one of the sessions, but some of them were really popular. So it, it, I'd suggest we could uh, put that forward to 720, maybe look at how many attendees there are in different venues and do more in some more popular locations than others maybe. Yes. One of the struggles I think they had is that it does require a, a um, I think this one does require a form signed by the parents in order for the kids to take part. So they can't really just engage with the kids that are just in the park at the time. Yeah. They have to then run and take a monitoring form, a, uh, what do you call it, consent form consent. back to their parents and then go back again, which is a bit of a shame really. Yeah. Obviously there's kids hanging around in the park that they have to engage with. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. I'm approving this application. Yeah. Well, We've got the family football, that's again new services. That's a thousand pounds, same as it was last year, specifically for bonds and the height. Well supported. 
Happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Good. Next one. Okay. Um, another one from the youth project, uh, again by youth services, 2,500. Uh, looking again at sort of the heights and the bottom of states, um, young people there. It was expand, we expanded it to two sessions uh, last year, uh, into two age group sessions, uh, which has been very successful. Um, what we were finding was that the older kids didn't want to go to the same thing as younger kids, so we, we doubled it up. So we do an hour for younger kids and an hour for older kids now. So, and that's been really successful. Yeah. That's a place of finding what they want, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the next one is Fars and Carvalet Transition Group. Um, this one's in June. It's £1,530. Seemed to work well um, in October. Um, does not need building on. Wasn't all that well attended. Um, but it's, there's very few things in carving faster for young people, and I think this is important. Mm. One of the things I know they were trying to do with this is to extend those sessions, engage more with the young people because they're, they're not really used to having that much going on in the area. As it builds up, this gives a chance to engage with them more, then encourage them to go to some of the other sessions that other people are buying. So I think that was the idea, just, just another way of tapping into young people. The different groups of kids, aren't they? I mean, it's very interesting with Carver United football are now one of the largest set youth setups for girls and boys in the whole of Leeds. And in Farsley, cricket for girls and boys is booming. So to say when we say that there isn't a lot, there isn't a lot for a certain group of, of kids. There's actually all sorts for another group of kids. Yeah, yeah. And it's trying to get it's trying Sometimes I wonder if the youth service push them enough towards sporting activities. And uh, we, we, another thing, we, we've got um, coaching for tennis in Carvey uh, Park and in West Ride Park. And the sessions are booked up with, again, young people. So, you know, there is all sorts, but we're talking about different groups of kids. And it's, it's sometimes I wonder if the youth service are proactive enough in pushing kids who are sport inclined and even if they're not sport inclined because they make a lot of friends lifetime friendships uh towards these uh other activities you hit the nail on the head there andrew because i think when kids go to secondary school from primary school particularly if they're leaving and going to a school for example one of the church schools where they might be the only child from that primary school. So it's really important to have another group of friends that you can lean on for support. Mm. So I think that is really important because kids do make good friends in football teams and rugby teams and dance classes and things like that. But there are other kids who are really struggling and trying to make friends and failing. Sometimes it's very hard. I mean, it's like it's like going into a jungle, going to secondary school. It, it is really hard for kids. We've forgotten rugby. Standing the rugby league, excellent youth well, uh, setup. Yeah. But, but I mean, uh, you know, Andrew's right. I mean, uh, across across the whole of the West, there's there's uh, facilities there. I mean, uh, we've got Worley Football Club. We've got Barley Hawkins at over there, uh, doing great job. But you, you need you to connect with them. Uh, I mean, they do the best to connect with with people, but. There's a certain group of youngsters that don't join things. And it, this is about getting those youngsters to actually take part in something. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe if they come to a football session, a rugby session, or something like that, that might mean that they connect with, with clubs that we've got that we've got going then, you know. Yeah. So we're all happy with that one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> Um, and then, have we just done some holidays one? Yeah, I've just passed those.
number six. That's mm -hmm. number six. Uh, it's a youth services, the summer holidays provision uh, out west, so in the summer holidays. Um, same price last year, 1,500. Only well spent, I think. Yes, given the trouble we've had <clears throat> through the summer, I would say it's uh, really important to keep that going. I'd be happy with that council's vote. Council Siri. Yeah, can I just ask this one? It says it runs each Wednesday, but I think it does it just run through skill term time, not on holiday serve period. Um, Number six. You're, 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 oh, next one, Simon. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm on seven here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm normally lagging on inside taste. <laughs> Are we happy to prove that one? Happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay, and then so the last one, oh, no, not that last one, this one is Paige. We've got the Pudsey Youth Cafe, um, funded in last year, looking for the same amount. Um, this is the one that's in, in the week weekday, £4,120 they're asking for. Thoughts on that, please? This is a classic case of um, the harder to reach youngsters who who are um, you know that it started off as, as a small group who were who typically wouldn't engage anywhere else and the group has grown and you know it's it's quite a popular cafe now um, and and it is the ones that that typically don't want to engage in sport and don't want to do other things so I think this is this is. Yeah, very, very well received for the for the young people that it does reach. Council Siri. <clears throat> sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, just with this one, could we approach them and see if they could run any activities during the half term period? Because obviously we see an increase in any social behaviour um, in the town centre, and it'd be it'd be useful to see if we can put activities on during the half term. Yep. Can I ask a question? Okay, we're happy yep. with that. Yep. And then we've got Breeze in the park. So this is a new application. Um, <coughs> very similar to what they did last year, very successful last year. Um, they're asking for 11,400. <coughs> in terms of our ward, it's always very difficult, obviously, representing all the different communities that we've got. Yeah. Some of our residents in Budsey, I'm sure, will go to Queen's Park okay. and attend it there. Um, we have swapped it before, have we, these ones? Okay. Ainsworth Park is obviously the easiest location and the biggest, but is there a time that we should look at whether Cardley Park should be used for young people there? I know many will be able to attend this one. It's difficult yeah, because Hayeswood would be the busiest. Yeah, was it? We've done four in Carbley. And, and we did do it before. And it was very busy. It was. But it wasn't busy with Carbley kids. It was, they were yeah, coming from all right. over the place and parking all over the place. Parents bringing them were coming up from Bradford. Um, it, but it was good. But I, I would be, it's difficult. It's always a struggle, isn't it? Yeah. It's difficult because I would hate the not to be one of these in Farsley. And you can't move, to, you can't go to West Roy Park because the uh, area of the ground is far too boggy um, where the pitch used to be. Um, football pitch, and I remember it well. Um, so you, you, Hayes' Park is by far the best, but I'm conscious there isn't anything in. in in Carbley, but I think we have to leave it at Asian Park for now. Um, but it is an issue we might want to revisit about some of the things in Carbley Park that, was, that we could tell us specifically to Carbley. They do a mini breeze sometimes, don't they? Which yeah, is a less that, 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 that could be better, a mini breeze. So back we can look at that for a, a future meeting. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I support it, uh, what we're proposing here. Uh, but I mean, we've we've alternated it between between Farley Hall Park and, and New World with the Rec. Uh, well, you know, I think we had it at Western Flats once, but 
the terrain at West Ham Flats. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 unless you're young football. I've <laughs> been had to push my mother up there when she was alive in a in a wheelchair. I, I tell you, silly. <laughs> but but um, as I said, we we've looked at that. So I, I think yes, it's in principle. But maybe what we what we do, we talk to our members about. <laughs> Yeah, it is a worry that sometimes Carly gets left out because quite often through the holidays, the kids are going places with the parents because it's that sort of village and they do tend to go places. But then there are a small group of children, older children, usually between 15 to 17, who don't want to do anything like that. And it's a bit like, you know, could we have something like a cafe? But it's too small to do that like you've got in Hudson. So it's a real tricky one. And like we said last time when we had it in Carvley, there were a lot of children from out of the area, not even in the Leeds Authority. Um, so, yeah, can we revisit it, I think? Yeah. Is, yeah. It, is it worth asking the question, given the amount of money that, 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 that they're looking for, is it worth asking the question of how many mini breezes we could have so that we could have it in different places? So obviously we've got Swinner, Tansel and Putsy. You've mm. got Farnley and Worthy. You've got Carvel and Farsley. Mm. So we've effectively got seven areas that we could ideally do with covering. Um, and could we get more bang for the buck if we did it smaller, shall we say? Can we, can we ring fence it and then look at that? Yeah. 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 Well, this is for the application. So they're wanting to know sort of by mid-April because they need to get it booked. Um, but I'm happy to go back and say we discussed it in the meeting. We've agreed. We've been agreed in principle. It's just yeah. easy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 They'll do something. We're in fancy. We want we want information yeah. about how we can better address. As Trisha's right, I said there's seven areas. Yeah. Right. You could add a lot more to that. Yeah, you could. In reality, each of the parts that we've got, we'd, 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 we'd like one, but we don't know that, really really yeah. But, you know, at least try and hit an area and give everybody an opportunity to attend. Okay. All right. Top with that one, we'll get that information for you and get that sent out. Okay, the last application then is for Dazzle Dance um, over at Farming Work. They're looking to start in May. Um, they're after £3,331 this time. Uh, this is to bring it back to what it should have been. If you remember when we started it up, uh, former councillor Ann Blackburn uh, went and got Dazzle to, to, to do this, to cover Heights and Balls, basically. Uh, and then we went and did a third of one in Wortley. Well, we've been doing the Wortley one since lockdown, since lockdown came back, but we've had difficulties with the other two, two venues. Uh, well, we think we found alternative venues to the to, to what they can do it, so uh, it, it's for that. Okay, have yeah. we that, Brian? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So just again to bring to your attention, there's two more applications that have come through, but not to be approved at this meeting, just because of the time. Um, for Councillor Smith and Councillor Blackburn, we'll know this one. It's about uh, Barnes and Heights Community Fund Day at Hillside Community Centre. Looking to do that in August, so half will pay half the money, um, and then they're coming towards asking for 2,500. And um, just to bear in mind, obviously, I know we haven't got a lot of funds in the app. And then again, the Friday night project, the music box, um, is asking for some more money for another youth project, um, as theirs will finish, and they're asking for 9,000. What was the feedback on the music box last time? It was a good turn out, but I can get some information out to you. I think it's important because it's yep. quite a large sum. Yeah. That's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, um, on the on the file of the Bones and Hikes from there, um, we've got seven and a half thousand pounds that haven't been spent out of, uh, this year's wellbeing. Um, our thought was that, and if you remember, Peter suggested because we're doing the spending fairly early, that the majority of that seven and a half thousand should be spending spending fairly early. Uh, I would like to suggest that we we, we allocate two and a half thousand pounds of 
that <coughs> we haven't spent in well-being towards that project. Um, basically, um, he's a bit more. I'm, I'm not sure actually it, it fits we we have. I mean, all right, there's, there's a lot of a lots of um, kids involved in it, but it's more a family uh, event. So, uh, and we again, it's in that priority area, and we started that without housing and ourselves started that up well before lockdown because we were trying to uh, do things in those, that priority area, in those priority areas. So that, that, that would be my suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we'll look at the ring fences. So um, I'll do the wellbeing ones first. Um, so these are ones that we've done previously and I've put them in there, um, considered the, the same the amount from last year. So obviously, if these want changing or increase decreasing, we can do that. So I'll start those ones. Can't about them. Yeah, and just on general on table three, uh, can't we have the? Uh, 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 I've, I've got no light in my wall, so I, I, I can really say it's uh, Can we have a look at what the costs are for those? Uh, I, I think uh, we, we need to try and get to the council to drive down its, its costs, I think, uh, on that. Uh, bearing in mind that we're being cut back on. So, so that, that, that's, that's all I want to say. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking against them, but you know. Uh, I think we need to be realistic, and they need to be realistic. Realistic, but let us get it. I don't. I don't disagree, Chair, with what David said, um, because all Natalie can do is to put in what they cost last time. I can tell you when um, the estimates are put together, uh, there will all be more. Uh, I don't know what happens in Pudsey, but the Carbon and Farsley quotes are just for the lights. And the road closure. Um, they're not for the Christmas trees, which we, we pay for separately. Uh, they aren't for the entertainment, which we have to raise money for. They aren't, I mean, in Farsley and Carvley, we raised between three and a half and four thousand pounds as a community to supplement this to do the lights. And without that donation, that, that fundraising, there wouldn't be enough money. So if they put their costs up again, mm. we've got a problem. As I say, I don't know what happens in Putsey, whether they raise their own money or whether the council pay for the whole lot. But mm -hmm. certainly in Carly and Farsley, we, uh, uh, we've raised a substantial amount and, and you reach the stage where, you know, having to ask the same people to, to, to help you out all the time, um, which happy to do and it will go on and, and uh, um, but I think David's right we should be saying come on you've got to really look at these costs and we don't expect the costs to go up above what these estimates are so yes we should ring, ring fence these because ones that do have their own organisation over and above what the council does, like Parsley, like Carvey, like Pudsey, need to know uh, that there's some funding there and start working out what they need to raise. Mm. You know, we're, we're already in the middle of March, and when we know where we are, we'll be, well, we've started already. Thankfully, got <coughs> some support as well. I'll tell you how much. Um, <laughs> I wish it was more. Um, but um, I think it's a point well made. Okay. Councillor Simon Theory. Yeah, echo what Councillor Andrew Carter just said. You know, we, we do some substantial fundraising in Pudze. The What highlighted there, 7,699, is what we spent on lights. It doesn't include what we paid for the stage and the traffic management um, that came out of last year's budget. I believe Natalie is going to come with a revised figure. But yeah, we, we raised over four, nearly £5,000 additional to the lights to put the event on because it's a huge community event. And without the volunteers, you think about how much hours and time they put in to, to pull everyone together. It's, you know, we need to get pricing right from Lee City Council. Okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, we, we ring fence them, but we get them. Yeah. 
Tell them that's the lot. I'll ask them the question, so I'll, I'll quickly go through them. Tell them that we said that. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have to put your name to it, Natalie. You put our names to it. You've got the old balls. That's fine. So the first ring fence is the same as last year for small grants and skips. So last year you did 5,000. Is that something that you want to do again this year or change it? No, I think it's, we, we're almost spending it off. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Happy with that, everybody. Yeah. Fine. The next one is the community engagement. Um, it's turned ring fence, and that was a thousand pounds. Did you spend it all this year? Um, I, I don't think that we did send it all this year. But I can definitely find out. Chair, could could we look to um, purchase some banners to advertise, you know, when we pay for um, bands in the park that is being funded through the Outwick West, West Community Committee? And same for Breeze, they could be taken to them events. We don't promote what we we do at the event. I think we have got one, haven't we? Uh, yeah, well, oh, we we need need anybody to take it there? So we're we're gonna... Gonna... <laughs> Get these and for 50 or 60 quid a piece, so, and uh, you know, we respect one, one banner that's reused if we can find it every year. <laughs> every, every, every year, in a lot of, in, in a lot of community <laughs> engagement, is it? <laughs> well, if it's put up a couple of weeks before, or however long you're allowed to put it up before, it's a bit of an advert, isn't it? So, I think Freeze have their own banners because I saw yes, them, they them all around the town mm -hmm. when before their event last year. So, yeah. right, it's what everybody's saying. Tell me. Well, what did we spend last year? <laughs> so, we've got we only spent £182 of it last year. <laughs> we cut it by 500 then. Lots of money. Harvard. Happy if we have it, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not, not like that, that as well. Yeah. Actually, we could do another youth project for that. Yeah. We could, yeah. Absolutely. Um, next one then is Lee's Watch. They're asking for a gift then. That was last year, 11,000. I've not had the application through yet, but we've been given the figures. Well, I don't see we have any choice with that, really. We really. accept <laughs> that. This will be the second year yeah, we've had that we've no asked. Yep, yep. Feedback. We, feedback. We asked for feedback last year and we haven't had any. Okay. So can you get after them? Next and you, don't get, you don't get any kind of information. No. no. Any same, no. Anywhere near this information you used to get. They used to send us suitably anonymous photographs of, of miscreants in apprehending, but all of a sudden, but, well, now for well, just a report would do, wouldn't it? Yeah, of, of what's would. happened at each yeah, of our of report, each committee. I, 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 once, I once saw a photograph of my one of my uh, former work colleagues, John, uh, complained about uh, that uh, that some strange man had been hanging around at Old Fairley, and this photo came round, and it was John. <laughs> If I might add, really much do the report. It's included in the update report every six months. You get an update. Update so Perhaps that's something that it has been provided. I know I'm not very to the committee to encourage it. So perhaps if you could look at the previous reports, update reports, and share at least that element of the report, so you can see that you are getting um, some information sent through to the committee. Um, in regards to Cascati, your comment about um. We used to get pictures and things like that. That was before the GDPR and all sorts of other regulations came in, which now prevent us from sharing some of the data that we might have been yeah. able to do previously. Well, well, um, but I know as well that Leeds Watch have been inviting councils up to come for some meetings and some tours. So they are, yeah, they are doing, you know, they are doing whatever they can to engage um, sure. with, with with members. Um, but if there is anything else you want me to be back, so obviously we are sitting there. I'm actually the head of service at the moment until the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, watch. So if there is anything else you want the service to do, then I can't be. They were to invite us individually to visit. They have. Yeah. 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 I, I, I should have gone uh, the week after the, the mini. 
and I, but I couldn't I couldn't manage to get there. It's been a rolling program of um, council invitation, yes. so All right. I'll, I'll, I'll raise it with them when I'm up on Thursday oh, and, sure. uh, oh. and ask for that to be specific. I, I would recommend anybody. I've been, I've been previously, and I would recommend anybody to go because it, it, it's, it's really good. Yes. yes, if they could reinvite us, because I, I couldn't go either. It, it was a very set, a set time and we couldn't couldn't make it. But I think it's important that we get more than every six months. We used to get them by email. Again, there are some new data protection right, okay. and things like that, which promotes us. Yeah, but, but, but I've got to say that that's inconsistent with stuff you get from other, or get other, other partners on stuff. And there is no consistency. Uh, uh, some departments will say this. I mean, I have got a case in, in point where on a piece of housing land is a vehicle parked. And one part council no owns, knows who owns that vehicle. It's one of the tenants in the flat. But they won't tell the housing department who owns it. And to my way of thinking, that's not about data possession. That's just being that silly. Yeah. 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 Right, so we're all going to get be invited yes, and we'll you're all getting re invited. We'll, we'll have the uh, lead watch report highlighted to us so that we, we don't miss it. Thank you. I think there's one during May. Is so, that yes, the June committee oh, should be able to have something for you. Oh that's mm -hmm. excellent. Good. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, so the Christmas lights then. So these are updated figures to what's on the report because yep. on the report it was just for the lights, whereas it said everything on, this is based on last year so i don't need to explain things but how the lights was two thousand seven hundred and four pounds is that something you'd be looking to do a similar amount of or i did speak to the light i was hoping to have updated figures from them because they did say it would be more this i know mm, we, we yeah. kind of expect that i've not had that so i don't have an exact figure what they're going to give us um i just know it's going to be more than it was last year yeah because we had some lights stolen Two years ago, so we didn't have we didn't have all the trees we took this year. Didn't ring them at all. Uh, well, they, they, what they did was they brought the lights and put them at the foot of the trees where they were going to, and then somebody Went saw them the and nicked them. <laughs> <laughs> so so somebody's gonna have a very big electric bill at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> right, okay. So um, we've discussed this earlier. Happy with that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the thousand then £7,899.99. pence. So that's for the lights and the other things involved with that. Um, I've, just to let you know that I've spoken to I think it's Laura Breeze, and she was asking me about it. Um, she can't get the quotes yet until they've got the dates, and she has given me two dates. I don't know if you want to, to do, talk about this now, but when's the 29th of November or when's the 6th of December? She's been told. Um, well, we've already emailed her with those dates. So, oh, right, okay. <laughs> she was asking me, so that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> she yeah. already knows. Uh, that's fair. I won't, I won't mention that again. So, yeah, so that's the amount that I've got from last year. Um, again, it's might have gone up this year. Um, are you happy with that? Well, we're not going to be happy if it goes up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Um, okay, that's that one then. Um, yeah. Puts the light. So, uh, Council Terry, um, thank you for letting me know that it was incorrect that I put out there. So, it was £9,816 um, is what we ring fenced for last year. Um, and that obviously included the light and the other things that happened at the, the switch on. Yeah, are you happy to? How's the Yeah, um, so it was uh, 9,549 uh, that we got last year grant buys from um, from the Outer West. Um, and obviously we, we overspent, but we paid in <laughs> for it, but that included traffic management stage and all the lights from Leeds Lights. So if, if we can go with last year's figure, that'd be fantastic. 9,549. That's got, gone up by. Has it gone up by a lot more than the others? Mm. 
So previous year was nine three four oh, but last year was nine five four nine. Um, previous year was nine three four oh. The figures on the report are just the lights. I've not put it all together. I've just put the lights. So what council say is the figure is the lights plus the other things. Yeah, yeah. So oh. that, yeah, that's why it looks yeah. like it's a lot less. <laughs> no, yeah, it should be nine thousand. That's fine. Are you happy with that one? Okay. Okay. Uh, last but not least is Rodley. Uh, so last year's ring fence one thousand eight hundred and forty pounds. Okay. Yeah. The problem. <laughs> we used to pay half of this, and when all of Rodley was put back into Carberry and Parsley Road, our friends in in a well, he immediately said, "Over to you, everybody." So we got the whole lot, but. Um, we can't leave Rodley out. <clears throat> no, that's fine. Lovely. Okay, so the next bit, I know we've already kind of agreed that um, the King's Coronation ring fence. Yep. Um, so three thousand pounds on well-being. That's a thousand pounds per ward, and one thousand five hundred from YAF. So that's five hundred pounds per ward. So happy with that. Yep. I can tell you, as regards ours. Um, We've just about settled on the date for the road closure. Uh, and we're paying for, we'll have to pay for the security and the staff and the insurance. But that is all because we do what we did at the Plasm and Jubilee and the businesses will look after their own stuff and the road will be closed for four hours. Um, we've looked at Saturday, we've looked at Sunday, we've looked at Monday. We've ruled out Sunday for a variety of reasons. And Saturday is extremely difficult because of all the events that are being televised. So it looks like Monday. And we've got um, some consultation with the businesses at the moment, but we have to confirm by next week whether it will be Saturday afternoon, which I think will be very difficult, or Monday, which is easier, but not the best of days. Now I've talked to Councillor Carlin about it afterwards. <clears throat> so you will, we will be utilising our support of the money. It might, might be helpful if, if you put some out on the website saying that there's money available for, for organisations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then we've got the YAF ring fences. And for this year, we've got the Youth Summit Internal Ring Fence, 1,500. I've, I've got a problem with this because we never get the kids that we really want, the kids that we can't engage with. They, they, we always get these really bright kids who know lots about all sorts of stuff. Councillor Carlo. Similar, Chair. It's a really useful event for those kids that do come. However, I'm not sure how useful the information is we get because it is from a certain amount i was wondering before one of the things i did we had something from one of the schools in farnley before who couldn't attend but said it was a shame they couldn't attend and i went to a classroom and did the exercise there with the children and we got then all the young people in that class at a school where to be honest i believe that the teachers were struggling to think of the fact that it'd be useful to take those kids out of education for a day but they were the kids we wanted to speak to. So one of the suggestions I've had, and it, and it depends what we do with the Youth Summit, I'm more than happy if I'm still the um, Young People's Champion next year to visit one, two schools award to have those conversations with a cohort of young people who will then be a whole class and so we'll get an accurate reading. And then we could discuss with the summit whether we do the same thing or whether there's something that is cut down more where the young people have a chance to come into the city hall and see it if they so wish, which would be beneficial for those um, young people that come. But the actual consultation was done otherwise, and that may be a way. You know, either we supplement it by doing both, or happy for us to go into schools and do it instead. I think that's a really sensible idea. I'd be happy to go into schools as well. So if we, you know, if a few of us went into the schools and and, and okay. took it to the schools. Um, rather than them having to take the kids out of school for the whole day. And I know it's a nice treat and everything, but if we're going into the schools, we know we're hitting the right kids, don't we? Mm -hmm. I, I support going into schools, but I still think we should do a young summit. 
uh, because it's quite useful for those two kids that go there. Uh, I mean, I'm going in the council chamber and meeting a lot there. Uh, it's basically getting them into democratic way of, of carrying on, isn't it? You know, uh, is a, a bit of their education that they're not getting on the way. So I'm I'm quite happy to carry on that way. But you, you're right, we don't get the feedback really that we want, and if we we need to go out there and do it ourselves. And as I say, it, it, it's just not Peter, it's bit, all of us have to do it. Yeah. The more tailored approach uh, seems to be a sensible way forward. And I don't disagree with David, but I think the, the events themselves are just not catering for enough new people. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're, we're missing a trick somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think a more tailored, we, we need to look carefully at it, but we should keep, certainly keep the money back. It just, I'll just say something that Trish and I'll bring you in. Um, I think last year we had some homeschool children come in and I think that was really useful because that's really good for them to socialise with other kids. So I was really heartened to see them there. Trish? I was just going to say, in terms of um, engagement, going into the schools is brilliant and I think that's something that we should absolutely do. Um, I think the Youth Summit in the Civic is, is a really nice thing to do. But equally, we, we've got... Um, put it to the call, we could have our own out to West Youth Summer and then we'd, um, we'd, we'd have less of a dilution of children. So we'd, instead of having all the children from across the city, we'd, we'd be able to tailor more to our own children's needs. Our own young people would get a better voice because we could um, engage with more of them where we'd only take probably half a dozen or a dozen to the Civic because of numbers. We might be able to get 100 or 200 in the Civic Hall. Um, yeah, beware, beware of the booking costs. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's, you know, it's, it's the funding's there. Um, you know, it could be something that we could look at, even if it wasn't this year and we built up to it in, in another year. I, I, don't, I don't think it's about... The, the main problem with, with use of it is, is actually getting schools to engage. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get a couple of schools from more maybe engaging. Uh, and... And, and certainly uh, older kids at high school level, it's, getting, it's, it's even out of the yeah. mm -hmm. For obvious reasons, because yeah. they've, they've, they've got Tied up with important exams as well, <laughs> and they've had it difficult over the last few years. So as I say, I, I, I think us going to them is more sensible. Mm -hmm. But as I say, I'm still won't stop it, because I think it's an experience for those youngsters that, that, that go there, and I won't want to stop that experience. That's a Carlo. It is, yeah. I was just going to add to it, really, and summarise some of that, because, I mean, the Youth Summit is a, an amazing day for those children, many of whom are the most gifted ones among the schools. And the questions I was asked at that Youth Summit about climate emergency and what we were doing to focus that were probably the most difficult questions I've had from any of our constituents ever, and they came from 10-year-old children, which was very heartening to see, and it was really positive. And then they come in, obviously, to the... Um, to see the Lord Mayor and we answered questions there, didn't we, for various things around our job. What's really good when I'm going to some of the schools is you're doing both that point about talking to people around the uh, activities that we do, but also I've got a series of questions that I do around, you know, what, what do you think our job is, what do you think the council does? And it gives people the opportunity to see what we do every day uh, of our lives, what also the council does and what services they have which it's very interesting going to different schools in different areas, what they think the council does and what they stand for. Um, and it tells you more about that cohort of children, I think, than it does about, about others. But that's a really valuable part as well, just people knowing we exist. They then go back to their mums and dads and tell them all various things that, that, that they could email us about and then you get those things afterwards. So it's really useful <laughs> going in and having those conversations. And, and yeah, as I say, those children who for whom completely understandably the schools are thinking, well, we can't really afford for that child to go out for a day and missing out on a lot of that experience. But the ones that go to the Civic Hall, it's a really valuable learning experience for those children who wouldn't get that otherwise. So, so yeah, both, both would seem a perfect thing to do. Okay, so what I'm guessing is that we want to keep this, but also tailor it a bit more and go out into the yeah. schools. Yeah, we can definitely have some conversations about yep. both of them, can we? Right, okay. Okay, okay. That's you to make. So the next one is Andy's Youth Project. I've spoken to Leah um, and that's not going to be going ahead this year, so I'm not that out. Yes. <laughs> okay. 
um, Fazer uh, Festival, they haven't been able to get an application to me um, in time, so that's probably on its way. Um, last year we put away 4,350. Um, I, I don't know when the festival is, I think it's May time. I'm not sure. No, but no it's later. It's summer holiday. It's, oh, um, right, okay. We need we to see the bank statement okay. and accounts because they now have four or five different things under the same umbrella. My suspicion is there's quite a lot of money tucked away. Um, and we could do with seeing the accounts of the Parsley Community Initiative, not just the festival, if indeed the festival had its own separate account. Um, it was very well. It, it was a pity last year, really, because it was a day following the um, Bassett and Jubilee when Parcel was heaving full um, and the weather turned. But there was quite a lot of people there, and it was certainly a good thing for young people, particularly thoroughly enjoying it. Um, but I, I think we do need to see where funding is. Yeah, I mean, it's really important that we do keep these events, but we're here to support um, events that are struggling yeah. rather than events that are, have already got plenty of funding. And we can help them, I'm not saying that. We want it to go ahead, but let's just see where we are with it. Are you happy with that, Peter? Yeah, it, um, I don't know at what time they need to know in order to start planning, because obviously it's coming up. So I don't know what we want to do in terms of well, I'm not suggesting we I'm not surprised to we, we, we don't support it, yeah. but I certainly wouldn't want to support it by more than 4,350. No. But I think when we get the application form, yeah, we can see the accounts. So certainly yeah. ring fence of 4,350, yeah. but yeah. want to see the accounts. Yeah, I don't believe it would go up because I think we've had conversations with it previously and I've spoken to the committee this time and they were imaginably putting in the same size application that hadn't. The most sizable bit is the breeze event that takes part that obviously yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. back to the council. Um, but yes, the, the full application will have the match funding of whatever the, the funding raised is as well, which would be useful to see. Okay, happy with that? Good. Cool. Okay, the next one then is the Outer West Activity Programme at Wesley's Activity Centre. Um, I think the last year we put away £6,600 for it. I've not heard anything from them yet. Obviously, that was early in the year. Um, but I don't know if, if we still want to do that this year. Chair, can we have some good monitoring on this? Because every year I raise this and every year they still get the money. Um, I'm not against it. Anything for the youths, absolutely. However, which youths are attending? Yep. You know, where are they coming from? What are they getting? What are we actually paying for? Um, because, you know, I'm told this group's gone, that group's gone, but I've not heard of them. Uh, and the USU leads the activity fund is the old uh, Benjamin Goss going. That's right, yeah. I mean, and anybody, anybody making their own way there, uh, after the end of this month, from various parts mm. of the, the, uh, as the uh, area will uh, find it difficult because there's one or two of those plus only in Yeah. At 14, we are in I'd, I'd really like, you know, we need to make sure that we are getting the right value for our money. No, we do. Natalie, can yeah. you get back to them and say we really must have some feedback on this, otherwise? You know, we're going to struggle to. Uh, members have been very difficult about this, and uh, not... <laughs> Here we go. we've got to look at the public money. Yes. Well, I have a concern. I don't know when we'll get to that, but the I'm not sure whether all the YAC money we've approved today will fit in the application. <laughs> we have more previous years, so I think. We, we may have to then go back over it and see whether we've got enough money to spend all this. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we have in previous years moved projects to YAF away from wellbeing because we've had spare, especially over the pandemic, with a few activities. I, I may need to redo. Sorry, I, 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 I will ring fence of 6,000 for 100 now and leave it. And um, there's no application come. We'll wait to see. Uh, it might spur a moment to give it, tell us what they're up to. 
Yeah. But at the moment, we leave it. Okay. Everybody happy with that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Do that then. Uh, and then the last one on there then. So I'll put this in just because we, we wanted to do it this year. So we've, we've just agreed it in the committee just gone. Um, but I thought I'll put it in for next year. This is just, just a suggestion for the, the Easter holidays, out to west, um, the youth services that are doing yeah, do it in Easter. Um, I put this, the amount that they've just asked for. So this is the I guess to make again but what it could be next year, who knows? Um but for two thousand five hundred and ninety two pounds I put it for that up for Yes. And I believe that is all the link then to the applications from me. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can we know where we're at then? Somebody's been doing some sums yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm busily peeking. I can't read because I've not got my glasses. Mm -hmm. You want me to do it? Um, I don't have to read it since you've written. Yeah, I don't mind reading it out. So, in your well being budget, you have remaining, if my figures are correct, £19,000 and after approving. Um, if you was to approve the whole of the projects that have been deferred as well, you would have remaining eight thousand eight hundred and forty pounds and thirty four pence. Eight thousand eight hundred. Uh, approximately eight thousand eight hundred and forty pounds and thirty four pence. Thank you. Yeah. In the YAF, you have remaining five thousand and ninety five pounds and thirty six pence. However. If you were to approve all the projects that have been deferred or that have not actually made it on this application, you would have a deficit of £30,004.64. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a bit uh, sobering. Yeah. I suggest in a couple then, um, obviously we need to find out about that project at the West Leeds Activity Centre and, and how that's gone because I also don't know how that's completed with the summer holiday targeted provision which does take young people to various other areas of activity um, there's some we've moved projects across at various times so at some point Spartan Festival has been for instance a well-being or a yeah and I wonder whether there's some of those we should look at splitting across the two half and half instead yeah. because it does cover both adults and young people. Um, I don't know what any other thoughts people have on the funding that's there. So the deferred ones, we obviously, so Andy's youth project isn't happening, so that's fine. The Outer West Activity Programme wouldn't be able to go ahead at that level. Um, and the other ones are What's the other deferred projects that we've got? We've got Pussy Park Litter, adult, the Adult Band Project, the Music Box. We've mm -hmm. got the Festival and the Outer West Activity Programme on there. Fest, it was that Farsley Festival, sorry. Oh, I told you the Farsley Festival off there, didn't you? The only thing, this street in, I've got on before, sorry. The Pudsy Park littering, the yeah. music box, and the Out of West activity program. Those are the only three you say. They're the three that are. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's fine then. Come back to them if, if money is available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. at the moment. That's not, that's not including that's the, not the money well spent this year. I think the reason why we would have been sense to put to fair it and just get a bit more information. Yeah, that's them. right. Yeah. I've, I have been thinking that would you? Yes, it's yeah, inside in there, but yes, yeah, it's just, just a. Yeah. So there's a, just the three that we defer. Do we need to get this right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I suggest that we defer them. And uh, if money become, money comes available, it can, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's as simple as that. Right. Yeah. We can confirm. You can't spend money you ain't so. got. Just wanted to check that we weren't deferring anything that we thought was maybe more important than something we've done, but that's on to the fair list for now, and we'll see whether we've got any carryover from previous years or, or what other ways we've got to make it. Might be some movers and shakers, might mm -hmm. Okay, you happy with that, everybody?
Uh, another thing I wonder if it's an exercise to uh, just look at any of the projects might qualify for capital because you could move it to sell yeah. and free, free up some of your revenue funding as well. Yeah, you mentioned exercise worth looking at if you've got a certain income spend. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. one of the main is I mean, the hanging basket, hanging baskets that we do obviously for parks and countryside. Um, a, a large amount of that, I'm guessing, is staff time, but then some of that will also be all the various bits of equipment and such. I'd rather that came out of some form of capital spending than. Yeah, oh, you don't disagree at all. Yeah. They could be brilliant. Mm. And it would free up some money, saving funds, saving parts. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so maybe if we can have a look at those parks and countryside ones and see if they can separate into capital expenditure. But, but we need to know. Because it's not fair to voluntary groups who are doing. Yeah, no, I mean, Charlie Park now has got three beds sponsored by individuals or groups mm -hmm. because parks don't do them. Uh, and it's important that these people know exactly where they are. It's not fair to leave them in the lurch. No, I quite agree with you, Andrew. Um, they do need to know. Are you happy with that, Councillor Perry? Yeah, um, it's, it's time frames, isn't it? Like Andrew Carr said, we need, the groups need to know soon as because the planting season's coming upon us very soon. Um, and then, you know, ideally, we want to know where the funding's coming from. Well, it, sorry, Chair. Sam was right, but it's worse than that because the in bloom groups have placed the plant orders. Yeah. yeah. And if they're suddenly going to be faced with more and more to plant because the council aren't doing or whatever, yeah. it just isn't fair. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, Liz. Thank you. Right, that's it. Well done, thank you very much, Natalie. Yes. So, uh, come to the end of the meetings now. Um, at the next meeting, um, we did say that we would bring forward the Champions Report. So, um, we may ch the champions may change next time, I don't know, but currently you're the children's champion, Peter, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm environment. What else? I do David and I are joint health. I think we do health between us, but I've been yeah. doing most of them because he's been doing a lot, lot, lot of children's work. Yeah. Councillor for Safe is a joint children's yeah. well, yeah. And Councillor for Safe will not be here in June. So. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Um, that meeting in June would typically be the one where we assigned roles again, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. Happy to provide an annual I think summary of work from any of the champions might be useful and then yeah. someone will decide who it is for the right so be prepared yep. reports next time yeah okay so um oh, this is it from mm -hmm. else got oh venues yeah yes yeah. yes we did discuss um other venues and time and try to, to to do more meetings in the evening so that um because some people struggle to get there, also some counties struggle sometimes. So uh, we did suggest that we would have an evening meeting. Should we do? Should we do the next one in June, an evening meeting, because that's going to be the annual one, or should we defer the evening meeting until after we've got the annual out of the way? Do the annual first. Yeah, I think evening meeting. Like, the annual meeting, a lot of that is process and administration. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and then we'll. The more interesting community. Yeah. We want to have the evening meeting before we get to that night. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good thinking. Good thinking. Happy with that, Councillor Sarah? Yeah.